Hey guys, welcome back to another in my series of dialing in videos uh, for our Line 6 Helix. Um, this one's a little little uh, different yet again. Last time I, uh, I uh, did an, I took an attempt at uh, coming as close as we could to getting the tone from uh, Alex Lifeson's Limelight, or Russia's Limelight, Alex Lifeson's tone on that after a request. Well, this time around, I was tagged in a post uh, in the Line 6 Helix group uh, by Matt Wolfson, and he had posted a, a fairly old video, uh, which was just, it was really bad quality audio actually uh, that John Mayer had posted, I, I, I guess on his YouTube page or somewhere, um, and it was him uh, at the Two Rock uh, factory, I guess we'll call it Two Rock Amplification Factory, and I guess it's when they were building him his signature model a number of years ago, and he was testing it out, and he was playing a little bit of the uh, riff to his tune, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room, I believe it's called. So, uh, And he, he, his question was, how can we get something close to this? That kind of really clean tone he's known for on a lot of his stuff that's kind of really big in the bottom and sparkly cleans on, on top and maybe, uh, you know, no, no uh, muddy mid-range, right? So I thought, you know what, he, he I thought I'd take a crack at it. Now, the problem was the, the camera audio was so bad, you couldn't really get any detail out of what he was playing. But I went and listened to the actual song he was playing from the record. I think it's from Continuum album. Um, and just knowing ab about what, you know, John Mayer's tone is like, I thought I'm going to try to dial in a tone similar to that. Again, I'm not here saying, oh, I'm dialing in John Mayer's exact tone. I'm not, not, even, not even attempting to do that, just to get something similar. So what I'm going to be doing is using a single coil pickup, neck pickup only. So this has kind of been dialed in for that kind of uh, position, which is a place that I've seen John Mayer play a lot. I mean, I'm sure he plays in, you know, with different pickup positions as well. So I thought, okay, let's try this out and we'll see how close it is. And uh, I got a tone going. I sent it back to Matt and he actually really liked it. And he, uh, we talked a little bit about what I did to get the tone. It's actually a pretty simple tone, but there is a really interesting factor going on here that I want to share with everybody. That's why I thought I would do a video about it. So what I started with was the US uh, double norm. Uh, since that is uh, a uh, model of a uh, twin, right, which is a 6L6 amps, which it seems like all of John Mayer's sort of signature amps, the two rock uh, was based around, which I believe it was only like 25 of those made. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, and they're insanely expensive, I believe, if you can get your hands on one. Uh, but I believe it was a 6L6 amp with 12AX7s, uh, preamp tubes, uh, 12AT7 driven reverb, I believe. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm just kind of going by things I've seen. Um, and I believe he has a PRS signature model amp now as well. Again, I'm not really, I don't really keep up with a lot of this. So, and again, I believe that's a 6L6 based amp. So I thought a twin might be a good way to go just to get that nice, clean. We're not looking, I'm not looking for a breakup here at all tone, uh, just more a really clean, getting that uh, nice tight bottom and, and, and sparkly highs out of it, you know? Uh, so I, I went with the US double norm. Um, now, as far as what the default settings were, I'm not sure, but here's what I came up with. I have the master on 10 channel on 10. I played around quite a bit with the EQ. You see, I, I put the bass up quite high at 7, mids way back 2.2, treble up around 4.5, presence up around 4, and the channel, vo channel volume up around 10 just to get that uh, as much you know signal out of this as we can with our drive at 6. Now, the drive on this obviously is not the same as a drive on something like a, a placator or something along those lines. It's not really uh, adding a lot of distortion to the sound. If we really cranked it, we might get a little bit of breakup out of it. But um, the sag hum, ripple, bias, and bisex, I left all of that alone. Now, I ran it into... Um, a 212 interstate cab, surprisingly enough, which is not the cab that gets uh, matched up with it by default, but this is the one that I used. Uh, it just worked. It was really nice. I put the 121 ribbon one inch back. I ran it into my split uh, crossover block, but I did something a little different here. I didn't really use it the same way I normally would on distorted tones. I set the crossover at 100 hertz, and I really hardly did anything. In fact, this this probably isn't even a necessary step, but I just have that set up as my template. So um, I just pulled the gain back. So it's like putting a shelf EQ at 100 hertz and pulling the gain back 1 dB, right? Uh, there's no delay on it. I mean, you could add delay if you wanted. Um, I did put my verb as a 63 spring, though. I wanted that spring verb that he kind of gets on this. And I put it fairly, 
fairly high in the mix at 38% with a decay of 4.7. This is totally personal preference. I mean, you could put more, you could put less, you could go less decay, more decay, whatever. I, this is just what I settled and I really didn't spend a lot of time on that reverb. I was kind of happy with the way. Um, it just worked nice, okay? Um, I have my little compressor at the end. I normally put, right, uh, similar settings. I did pull the mix back to uh, a little bit more of a parallel style compression, 70% to let some of the dynamics of the uh, the, the pick uh, attack come through and finger picking it, but that snap come through, right? I bumped the level up quite a bit here just to get more level overall on the, uh, on the tone. Um, this is where the interesting stuff happens here though. I wanted to have a nice big bottom end on this tone, right? Um, so let me just turn the EQ off first. In fact, well, let me just talk about one thing. I have the low cut set on here at 100 hertz and the high cut at 12 kilohertz. And that's why I said this was a very subtle thing. I, I don't know why I ended up just pulling that back another dB. As I was playing, I, I rolled that back. and I was like, okay, it seems good. You know what? If I toggled that on and off, I couldn't even tell you if I would notice a difference. But it worked at the time and I left it. So that's not a crucial step here. But uh, also because I have the 100 hertz roll off on the low cut here too, which I believe... I think it's 24 dB per octave, but again, don't quote me on that. Uh, somebody like Eric Harbauer could probably tell me more about that because he does a lot of these measurements. So Eric, if you don't mind posting again, I think we've talked about it before, but I can't remember what, what we'd said uh, the roll-offs were in a uh, number of dB per octave here. But anyways, so I have that set, but I have some other interesting things going on in the EQ I'll come back to. So before I put that EQ on, here's what just the amp sounded like with the 121 ribbon through the 212 interstate, okay? Um, <laughs> Something interesting happening here. I was liking the tone, the, the upper stuff. It was nice, it was sparkly, it had a fatness to it. It was really, really nice. Um, mind you, the other thing on this, I have the tone control rolled back to around seven and a half or eight on this, okay? If I have the tone control right up, this is what it sounds like. Either way is fine, right? I, I, I just seem to like the, the warmth of it being rolled back a bit. Okay, so that was nice. I don't know if you noticed something though. Every time I was playing, you know, the, the funny thing about this, I was using this song to dial it in. And so it could obviously be used for a bunch of other songs, but uh, the first chord in this song is a C sharp, right? Minor. Uh, songs basically in C sharp minor, E major, however you want to think of it, right? C sharp minor, A major. E for the most part, there's a couple other things go, goes on in the later sections of the, of the song. But what I noticed is every time I went down and hit the, the C sharp here on the sixth string, the uh, ninth fret, or even somewhat there, there was a funny kind of resonance in this tone that got a little bit out of control that I wasn't too happy with. And you know, this is what I found interesting about this tone is that would make some people want to go into the bass control and maybe pull it back, right? Uh, maybe instead of being at seven, we say, okay, I got to dial that bass back until that resonance goes away. That's a little bit better, but now everything else is kind of thinned out, right? I really liked it with the bass up here. Just added a nice fat bloom around the notes that I liked, but depending on what system you guys are listening on, I don't know if you're gonna notice that or hear. Do you notice how there's almost like a, a just a, a weird resonance going on when I hit that C sharp note? Kind of encompasses the sound. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna to touch the amp. I'm gonna come into my EQ, I'm gonna turn this on, and knowing what frequencies these notes lay in, I believe uh, that note's around 138 hertz, give or take, you know, uh, don't, don't quote me exactly on that, but I went into 140 hertz with an extremely high Q of 9.7, which means if you go back and watch the video I did about EQ, the Q is going to be how wide or narrow uh, the frequency range that our, whatever frequency we have it set to is going to affect around it, okay? so. 
I pulled that all the way up almost to maximum so that it's almost just going to be like a notch filter pulling out almost nothing but the frequency you have it set at. I believe I'd have to do the calculation again, but I believe having it set up here, it's really only going to pull out somewhere around eight to 10 hertz in and around 140. So it's probably gonna affect somewhere in around 132 to 148. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm just going by memory here. It's not important anyways. I went very narrow. And if you look what I did, I pulled that back 11 dB. By doing that, what I noticed is I kept the nice fatness around all the other notes. <laughs> When I came down on my C sharp, which exists in and around the 140 range, I can now hit that. Right? Whereas if I have that turned off, is it on? This is interesting because I thought, well, is it just my guitar that's doing it? Is it this guitar and these pickups? And that could be. Is it my room that's causing that resonance? Well, I, what I did is I took my Sennheiser HD 600 headphones and I, I tried dialing the tone in a little bit with that as well. And I noticed the same resonance was applying. So could it just be this guitar and pickups? Absolutely, it could. So the reason I want to bring this up is if anybody else uses this tone uh, and tries it out and goes, wow, it's, it, that, when I hit that C sharp, it really kind of falls apart. It's too thin and it's, there's no beef or fatness. Well, that would be the magic place place to go look and you could even play with this um, to your liking right uh, maybe you only want it down 6 dB maybe you want to roll a little bit more in and you'll notice if I'm you can hear how muddy and out of control that note gets whoops sorry about that hit the wrong freaking hit the wrong roller there. You know, even there at minus eight. You could even roll that right up to 10. Okay, so wherever you find that that's going to be suitable for you. But it's really designed to control that one thing. So instead of affecting all the frequencies in the bottom end, I just fine tuned into the one note that was the problem area, pulled that back and adjust to taste, right? And other people might want it different depending on the guitar and the pickups you use too. You're gonna to want to, to dial that in however you want for your monitoring system and for your guitar and pickups. So, and, and to your personal preference, right? Maybe you want a little more beef there, right? Um, I also just pulled back 420 Hertz by uh, at a Q of 1.4 minus one, 0.2 dB just to kind of give a little more clarity in those low mids where some things can sometimes get a little bit muddy and that's really all I did so that's it the patch is basically the US double norm with these particular settings here whoops sorry about that uh, into a one uh, sorry a 212 interstate with a 120 ribbon set at one inch um, again this very subtle sort of low shelf with a split cross over minus one dB uh, at 100 hertz uh, a 63 reverb set to my taste but again your taste may be different and uh what i just talked about with the eq and a little bit of compression at the end and we ended up with a pretty nice All right let me uh i found a pretty uh, pretty neat uh, backing track which is actually quite nice for uh that exact john mayer song slow dancing in a burning room i believe that's the actual title of the song anyways um so i i thought i'd just do a little snippet of me playing some of the intro overdubbed a little bit of the lead part and then just kind of noodled over it i apologize in advance for the uh shameless uh ridiculous noodling over where john mayer would normally sing uh I trust me, it's much more preferable to hearing me try to sing the song. So um, just to let you hear how this tone would sit in the mix. Keep in mind in the mix that you're hearing, there is nothing done to this tone after the fact. This is just the backing track. I, I played one quick take of me noodling around over it. And then I just kind of bounce it to taste really fast in the mix just to hear, let you hear what this would sound like potentially in a mix. Okay, I'll play that now and I'll be back.
so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you like the tone. I, again, uh, standard disclaimer, I'm not professing here to d- be saying I dialed in John Mayer's tone exactly. I was just going for something more in that vibe and in that style um, after Matt had uh, tagged me in that post. I'm glad he did. This was really fun. This is a tone I'm probably going to use. And uh, I hope uh, you guys, it'll be up on custom tone like I put with all mine. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoy uh, the, the patch and it works out for you. And like I said, tweak away with it, right? Especially at those places I showed you uh, why I did certain things. And um, I hope it works out and I hope it sounds great for for you and uh, go and get on your uh, John Mayer and uh, have some fun with it. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm going to have a lot more uh, videos like this coming in the near future and uh, share it, subscribe, like uh, all those good uh, YouTube things. And uh, I thank you guys again for the support and the kind words, and we will see you again very soon. Ciao for now. Take care. Thanks for tuning in.